welcome to our session on interface design and wireframing. Created for our MIST 2090 Introduction to Business Information Systems course at UGA's Terry College of Business under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. In this presentation we will discuss where we are at in the systems development life cycle, the concept of design and how it relates to developing information systems, design as it is applied to information systems interfaces, and we'll look at our tool for designing interfaces called wireframing. Here's our picture of our system development life cycle. So after analysis and requirements, we work on design, development, and implementation of our information technology. Notice, this is a cycle. It's iterative. It never ends. The contemporary business world works in projects. The moment you are finished with one project, you're ready to roll on the next one. For this talk, we will be focusing on the design stage of the SDLC. We'll be thinking about how the interface of our application will work and we'll learn about a tool used by interface designers called a wireframe. What is design? You can design many things. Some of the things that people think of when you say design include article of clothing by a fashion designer architecture of a building, or a consumer product. Design can be defined as a noun, a plan or drawing produced to show the look and function or workings of a building, garment, or other object before it is built or made, or a verb to decide upon the look and functioning of a building, garment, or other object, typically by making a detailed drawing of it. With this particular definition, we're speaking of the models that were of our design. In the world of business and information systems, we also do design. You can design an entire enterprise, organizational design, a new process, business process design, a software application, application design, a database, database design, a website, mobile app, marketing campaign, you name it. Herb Simon, a Nobel Prize winning economist once said, Design is changing existing situations into preferred ones. Regardless of what you are designing, the act of design follows a few key principles. Design is generative in that it involves creating something new. Design is iterative. This involves repeated cycles. What we describe as trial and error learning where you take a shot at a design, try it out, and revise the design based on what you've learned. Design is representational. Designers use pictures, models, prototypes to communicate with self and others. The models shown here are a sketch, a three-dimensional computer-aided design model, and a physical block model, all used to represent different aspects of the Peter B. Lewis building shown in the last image. Design is collaborative. In business, design is never done by just one person. There's always a client and a design team where different people are responsible for different elements of design. Finally, design is complex and unpredictable. You never know precisely what you'll end up with when you start a design process. The design itself can be emergent. A good design uses many prototypes. A prototype can be defined as a model or a representation of a design idea that is used to test that design idea. The three-dimensional image shown here can be considered a virtual prototype in that it is entirely digital. It saves us from having to do a full-scale mock-up of the building to test our ideas. There are many elements of designing something. You could design a business process, data model, a variety of things. One common element of the design phase is the interface design. A key aspect of any information system is the user interface. A user interface is the means by which a human and a computer system interact. 
The term is used to describe the physical and software components of a system together. For example, the user interface of an iPhone app involves the buttons and arrangement of the app itself, but also the form of the iPhone and its physical screen. A website's user interface involves the screen in the browser, but can also be thought to include the mouse and the keyboard. Since the mouse and the keyboard are fairly standard, the website's layouts themselves dictate the quality of the user interface. To illustrate the importance of the user interface, here we have a famous example of a horribly designed user interface. The question becomes, why is it horrible? What criteria can you use to tell good interface design from bad? Take a moment to reflect on this page and see what you think are the worst aspects of this design. From a web design standpoint, the most important interface design principle is usability. The interface must be, quote, user-friendly. This means that humans can interact with the website in a way that enables them to achieve their purposes in an efficient and effective manner, typically without previous experience or training with a website. Interface issues for web pages include mystery meet navigation, the idea that you can't tell what lies behind a button, or animation enabled by technologies such as Flash that are generally bad for usability or are not even usable on devices such as an iPhone or an iPad. Good things for usability can include the effective use of white space. By not filling up the page, you can highlight what matters. And following standard browsing experiences by using following by using common current conventions, which include top to bottom, left to right navigation of the page. Keep in mind that while design can be related to art, the difference between art and good interface design is usability. Check out Jim Carrey's page sometime. It is very clever, interesting, and artistic. It won many design awards. However, it is entirely not intuitive and difficult to use. It's full of mystery meat, and animation that kills usability. The general rule to contemporary interface design is to do one thing well. Simple, simple, simple. YouTube, Google, and some feel even Facebook are all examples of simple, useful, and intuitive interfaces. However, you cannot always be simple. Sometimes your website simply handles a very complex topic. One way to handle complexity is to make the interface user configurable. A user can decide what they want to see and what they don't. For example, sites like My Yahoo emphasize this configurability. Another way to handle complexity is to stick with very generic and standard text-based navigation strategies. Amazon can sell virtually any product of any type using a highly standardized interface on every page. Recent innovations remind us that user interfaces matter to businesses. Apple's interfaces are revolutionary in their usability, and Apple has benefited incredibly. Microsoft's common menu systems across applications is usability through standardization. Not as elegant sometimes, but definitely effective due to its ubiquity. Note that websites across the board are also beginning to have a common look and feel. This holds true for mobile applications as well. Standard, usable websites and applications have the following features. They're intuitive. You don't really need a training manual to be able to see what to do. The home page is very important. But what about the shopping cart? The best home page in the world means nothing if you lose the sale at the shopping cart. So it's important to prioritize which pages need to see the most attention. And keep in mind that some pages which are not intuitive might also be important. Similar information can be grouped together. Here we see navigation and general information at the top and latest news grouped together near the bottom. Good interface design reveals the content. There's no mystery meat. The links on this page, an award-winning business site, clearly define what is going to be on the next page when you click on it. Links have usable and important keywords. Simplicity. Don't overformat. In this mobile weather app, we see a very simple design, very intuitive and easy to use. Strategic use of graphics can be important. Here graphics are used to show the logo, 
some of the stylistic elements such as color in the background and the banner and to easily be able to see what different sections are about. One potential problem here is the picture of the newspapers. While this is supposed to be the inside scoop, it may not be clear to everyone that what this graphic means. And the use of standard components. A wireframe is generally a skeletal three-dimensional model in which only lines and vertices are represented. For user interfaces like those with websites or mobile applications, it's a visual guide that represents the skeletal framework of the user interface. Here we see an example of a wireframe for a music store website. Note where images might appear, we simply see a box with a label showing album art. Where there might be text, we see labels indicating what that text might be, such as in the center where it shows artist's name and a description about the artist. The real text will be inserted later when the wireframe is actually implemented. Some detail may also be added that will eventually show up, such as labeling for navigation and input components, such as the choosing an album. But mostly, it's a blueprint for the final design. Wireframes can be used for any type of information system interface, not just websites. Here's a sampling of several mobile wireframes. In these samples we generally see several screens drawn to indicate because of the smaller screen real estate what might be shown on a mobile device. Each of these wireframes have various levels of detail depending on the designer's preferences. Some are more roughly drawn while this is a more roughly drawn design, it's quite useful. You may think of it as something that was drawn between two people on the back of a napkin one night while they were having dinner and discussing it. Another nice feature of this one is that the arrows tend to show the flow between screens. With this mobile wireframe, they've added the screens within standard iPhone template, so it looks more like the real-life final version. Wireframes are a useful tool used by many professional designers when designing their user interface. For more information about the topics and the images shown in this presentation, please visit the sources shown here. This has been a Piercy production.